Here I have a single graviton that's uh, floating free in the cabin and it's spinning. You can see it wants to spin about the uh, wheel inside as well, so you see the outer case spinning also. But I'm trying to get it to tip over, and I can bump it on the sides, on the top, on the bottom, and I can't make it tip over. It's stable about the axis I let it go in, which is uh, the spin axis is up and down. This is the same configuration. I've got one uh, spinning graviton here, and I've oriented it so the spin axis is pointing at the camera. Again, I'm just bumping it on the sides and the top and the bottom, and I cannot get it to tip. It's stable about the axis I let it go in. This should be a graphic demonstration of a spinning and a non-spinning graviton. You see the spinning graviton stays stable while the other one tends to tumble end over end because it has no stable spin axis. I'll do this one more time. You can see that one is spinning and one is not, and the one that's not spinning just tumbles free while the other one maintains the orientation I let it go in. Okay, here I have two spinning gravitons, and they're both stable as they spin here. And I take one and bounce it off the other. You can see this time, because they're both stable, they don't tumble. Neither one of them tumbles, as you might expect. Now here I have a curious combination of two gravitons that are attached together on a wiffle ball. And I have them both spinning in the same direction, so I would think, I would have thought they'd be very stable in this configuration but because they weren't perfectly aligned with each other, they got out of hand. Wham! Came apart and really gave me a surprise. Let's take a look at that in slow motion. You can see how the misalignment causes them to break apart. Now this time I took those two gravitons and I rotated them in opposite directions from each other. And because they're angular momentum vectors are in opposite directions, their stability axes cancel each other. So I'd expect to be able to let this go and just have it tumble. Now obviously I can't make them both spin exactly the same speed, so the one of them is going to have a little bit of stability, but you can see I can bump this stack and I can make it wobble around a little bit. As I bump it here, you see it will wobble some. It has some tendency for stability, but not as much as a single graviton would have floating on its own. I can make it wobble pretty wide end over end. So having two of them spinning opposite directions canceled each other. Now we're getting complicated. I have three gravitons all hooked to the same wiffle ball, orthogonal to each other. That is, their alignment is 90 degrees to each other. And I'm going to spin them all in the same direction with reference to their attachment to the wiffle ball. Now, as I do this, you would expect that the angular momentum vectors of each of the gravitons would add up to a single vector which would be right between all three. So as I let this go and it tends to rotate, the only axis that it will rotate around is an axis that you can see if you put a pencil between all three of the gravitons, it's rotating about that axis that's equidistant from all three of them. Now as it continues to spin up by the natural character of the friction in the gravitons, it eventually spins up so fast it comes apart. Here's the same combination again. I have three gravitons mounted orthogonally to the wiffle ball, and I'm going to spin them all up in the same direction. And before I spin them up, you can see how they tumble end over end. There is no stability there because none of them are rotating. Now, as I spin all three of them up, initially when I let them go, you'll see them begin to rotate around that same axis that's right between all three. But one of the gravitons comes off, and look what happens to the remaining two. As that bottom graviton came off, the remaining two gravitons now are rotating around an axis right between the two of them. And again, I was lucky I didn't get beamed by this graviton as it came off toward me. Now here's an experiment that's a good demonstration of how a non-spinning graviton behaves just like a ball on the end of a string. I can change the axis of a rotation just like you could with anything attached to a string here on Earth. But once I spin this graviton up, look how it maintains that stability around its rotation axis. 
I can spin it around and around, and it wants to stay in an orientation so that the spin axis is parallel to the axis of rotation that I'm holding the string in. Now look how I changed the orientation, and eventually the graviton ended up changing the orientation of its rotation so it matched the rotation axis of the string. Very interesting change in the way the graviton behaved. Now eventually I'll take it back to a horizontal rotation so the rotation axis of the string is vertical and you'll see the graviton again orient itself so its spin axis is vertical to match the rotation I'm making with the string.